clock may say 8.49, but it is really time to get serious, to get freaking serious. Literally got to freaking lock in for this one. Um, but like legit though, legs, quads specifically, um, I don't know if it's just me, but I feel like this is a pretty... I mean, I was about to say well studied, but like a pretty known fucking fact is it's hard to fucking train quads, you know? When I do a set of dumbbell curls, uh, a really heavy set, lower reps like 8 to 10 or something, or even a higher or a, or a lower weight where I'm getting up in like even 25 reps, uh, or chest and back, I don't have much difficulty taking that set to fucking failure. Like, the, um, my tolerance for the uncomfortability that my bicep is feeling in the middle of a set of curls, it's pretty good. And same thing with chest and shoulders and arms and everything else, to the point where I can take it to muscular failure and get to the point where I can only do, like, little partial reps. Or with something like bench, you know, get to the point where I just can't do another fucking rep pretty easily. Hamstrings, too. Hamstrings, I do not have a problem training. But quads, leg extension sets, honestly, mainly leg extensions. I don't have much problem doing this, even squats too. But that's partially just because, you know, if I think I could maybe get one more rep on a set of squats, I may rack it just so that I can fucking, you know, do another set without having to like unload the weight and reload it. But with leg extension specifically, I can tell that my uncomfortability factor starts to get pretty close to my fucking, you know, like the difficulty factor of the set. So what I mean by that is leg extension sets take the most focus for me and the most kind of, you know, I don't want to say, I kind of want to say fucking discipline, you know, because if I sit on the leg extension, uh, or if I sat on the leg extension with like light weight, and I'm doing squeezing reps, I'm really fucking squeezing it. Depending on how light the weight is, I might just end the rep or end the set purely because I can't fucking take it anymore. So with quad training specifically, I think that's why I tr sort of, you know, lean towards heavier sets, you know, really heavy leg extensions, uh, followed by like, you know, maybe a super set of sissy squats or heavy squats or whatever, purely due to the fact that I'll hit muscular failure quicker, and the set is almost easier in a way. And maybe that's just me calling out the fact that I'm a fucking baby, and I'm like, oh, my quads hurt when I do leg extensions. But, yeah, I definitely noticed that is why I go a little bit lighter. And maybe that's my fucking, maybe that's my body's way of telling me, dude, you gotta start doing high rep sets for quads, like 30 rep sets of leg extensions. And uh, just burn the fuck out of them. Because you haven't been doing it. That could be. That could be. Really my takeaway is I just gotta fucking man up and hit legs hard. And I don't think I'm alone in thinking that. I, uh, I'd go so far as to say most of us could be training our legs fucking harder. So that's, what, that's the mindset, that's the mentality that I'm going into this leg day with but I want to fucking push it. And not not the weight specifically, you know? Like, I'll have days where I can squat five plates in a 25, um, or, you know, I used to squat six plates a few times. Actually, I've only done six plates for, like, three sets. That's really as much as I can handle. Uh, but, like, some days I'll be super strong, and other days, I mean, fuck, four plates feels like, like I got a fucking ton on my back, and it's about to crush me. So... Regardless of my strength level on any given day, it doesn't really mess with me, you know? Like, maybe it does a little, and I'm like, oh, fuck, I feel kind of weak today. But that doesn't take away from the intensity that I try to bring to no matter what weight kind of set that I'm doing, you know? If you can do 315 pounds on the bench for 10 reps on a really strong day, and 10 is your absolute limit, and you have to rack it, that's a pretty hard set. Very good. But then the next day, fuck, man, maybe for whatever reason, a little bit dehydrated, 
uh, you know, just whatever. I mean, some days you just have an off day for fucking no reason, and you can only get 275 for 10. And that 10th rep is absolute max effort. You couldn't get another one if you tried. Those two sets are the same intensity, right? Or if you put a guy next to you who's a fucking beginner lifter, and he can only bench one plate for 10 reps, but that 10th rep is an absolute fucking grinder, and he could never get 11, no matter how hard he tried, on that specific day. All those sets have the same intensity, you know? We, um, we definitely attribute more coolness fucking points to the 315 benchers, just because, oh, three plates, yeah, sick. And, uh, <laughs> I don't mean to say that and to make fun of you, you know, in kind of an insulting kind of way. I think that, too. When I see heavy weight, I'm like, yeah, badass. Because it is cool. But you gotta remember, you know, weight's weight. Weight is, weight is literally just a number. So I'm more impressed seeing a guy do a 225 pound squat to failure than I am seeing you know, five plates for an easy set of like four. You know? Because in that moment of that set, that guy doing the 225 squat to failure, he went harder. He was pushing himself way fucking harder than the guy doing an easy set. Now, if that guy was a power lifter doing like, you know, an RPE six back off, that's its own thing. But when it comes to actual kind of hypertrophy level sets, um, I'm not saying it's absolutely necessary because there's definitely benefits to be gained from doing like, you know, pump work in a sense. Like if I were to sit in front of the dumbbells and totally change up my approach to arms and say, okay, you know what, instead of doing three like crazy heavy set of curls and then moving on. I'm just going to grab the 40s, 10 reps really squeeze hard and put them down. 10 reps really, like even though the sets aren't a failure, I will definitely get a good burn on my fucking biceps. They'll be pumped. They'll be fatigued. They will have done work, which I think will, you know, put you in the realm of hypertrophy, potentially. But for the most part, I like kind of taking things to the extreme. What I mean by that is, like, if you take two hypotheticals, typically you can find the side which is probably more accurate by thinking about it in a fucking extreme way. You know? So uh, let me try to think of a fucking... Well, let's just think about this. You know? How hard should you be training? How hard should you take your sets in the gym on a consistent basis? Injury, whatever else, and you got to back off and do, like, recovery work. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking you're strong. You're ready to fucking lift. You got your fucking hostile amped flowing through your veins. I, I took a, I took three scoops, which is one and a half servings. Oh, I can already, I can, well, whatever. So you're ready to lift and you're fucking strong. What do you do? So let's, let's do some two extreme hypotheticals. One guy, zero intensity. He picks up the five pound dumbbells, does a fucking set of, you know, 10 reps, whatever, hardly doing anything, fucking just puts them down, doesn't break a sweat, doesn't push himself, leaves. Is that guy gonna grow? You don't need a fucking PhD in exercise physiology to know the answer. No, he's not. And then you take the other guy who is absolutely fucking in the zone, just he's foaming at the mouth, and he grabs the 50s, 18 reps, and he could never get 19, even if you put a freaking, you know, even if you put a golden scar behind him and pointed it straight at the back of his noggin, he's not getting 19 reps. And he's just fucking, he's going as fucking crazy as he can. He's going to get better results. Now, am I saying that in between, there isn't, you know, a range of also efficacious levels of intensity, of course, it's very true. You know, every set doesn't have to be taken to absolute, complete muscular failure. There is benefit in doing sets where you kind of go to a point of fatigue where you say, okay, that was enough. You know, like if I'm doing, um, uh, well, a lot of movements where you can do partials, you know, I'm thinking like lateral raises, lat pull downs, cable rows, some machine rows. I'm not going to keep doing a set until I can physically not move at all. I can always still move like a little, 
but I do try to take it to the point where I can't do solid, complete reps. You know, but the guy who pushes the sets hard, he's going to get better results than the guy who doesn't. And I really hate seeing comments that say, or so, not the initial comment. It's just a question. Should I be training this hard? Should I try to take all my sets to that level of intensity? Should I try to take them to failure every set? Curious question. Beginner lifter. Valid question. What's the answer? And then I see the response. You should never try to train that hard. You're not Sam. You're, ta you're not taking your supplements and everything else. You cannot recover from that kind of workout. You got to train easy. Who gives a fuck, man? I'm serious. It doesn't matter what the hell you're doing in terms of, you know, extracurriculars. You are going to get better results the harder you train. So, I say take your sets as hard as you fucking can. And I think it's a little bit... I'm, I'm recreating a speech I did a little while ago. But I think it's pretentious to even say, like, oh, I should probably hold back a little bit. As though you're even capable of pushing yourself to absolute muscular failure. Even when I do a crazy set of curls or pushdowns or leg extensions or hamstring curls, I'm not hitting complete muscular failure. I'm just hitting as much activation as my brain can muster through my nervous system. You know, if I hit failure on a set of hamstring curls today and like I can't move, if somebody were to Frankenstein style stick some electrodes into me and really, you know, pump the juice zap my hamstring into contracting, I'd probably get five more solid reps. So the fact that you think you can even push yourself to a level at which, I mean, yeah, it's just so silly. So what I mean by that is if you take your sets as hard as you can, or as far and as hard as you can, you are going to be setting yourself up for success. And if you train too hard, which I absolutely do not really uh, think happens that often, at least not to anybody who actually trains, you know, consistently, right? Of course, if I tried to run a marathon, uh, or if I tried to run any period or any distance, it would probably kill me and I'd feel it the next day too. But that's not the training I'm used to. If you get used to weight training over a period of time, you're going to be able to handle a pretty serious amount of damage, you know? So if you do an insane leg day, and the next day, you can tell you are systemically fatigued. Even though you ate all your food, you got a good night's rest, and you're well hydrated. And you just, I mean, it's going to take you a little bit longer to recover from that workout. Then take a fucking rest day, man. Just because I don't do rest days too often doesn't mean that they're not good. If anything, maybe it means I'm not training hard enough. Right? Like, I think rest days should be taken as necessary so you know when people comment like oh you'll never be able to recover from that for one thing you're totally underestimating the fucking capabilities of the apex predator of this planet right aka the homo sapien but for another thing if you can't recover before you go to the gym the next day then just take a day man right if every day i worked out and then the next day i could tell i was I'm fucking too tired. I'm still like sore and fatigued. Like I still need to recover. Then I'd only train once every two days. And I would just take that extra recovery to get ready to go to the gym again. But if you get used to training, then doing it consistently, you are going to get used to it. So getting into a little bit of a, getting a little heated. The last thing I ever want to hear is someone say to any level or to any degree don't train that hard you know what that sounds like that sounds like be a baby right? cry to mommy <laughs> come on that is nuts that is absolutely nuts do not catch yourself oh don't even <laughs> that just keep that mentality as far away from you as humanly possible oh my goodness in terms of lift, legs, we know the deal. <laughs> hamstrings first, hamstring curls of a few varieties. They have a good laying curl machine I like here, so I'll just bounce around. 
I mean, just hamstring curls. That's uh, that's pretty much the sum of it. And then quads will be a combination of maybe maybe Smith machine squats, maybe barbell squats. Leg extensions are guaranteed. Sissy squats are guaranteed. And I might do some leg press because there's a uh, there's like a pendulum leg press of this gym, which I've never tried before. But I tried one similar uh, back at one of the gyms closer to where I live. If you remember, that was the leg day where it was the, the single side loaded pendulum leg press, if you remember. I was doing one leg at a time. But this machine is just like that, except it's a solid pad for both legs. So I might want to try that because it feels good. Fuck, man. I want some more pressing in my routine. I'm not usually a, a leg press fanatic because I get a ton of glute activation. You know, something about being pressed up against the seat. Um, if you can kind of imagine on a leg press that, like, put yourself into the, sort of imagine that that pad where you're putting your feet is the ground. So if you were squatting in that position, it's the leg press is kind of like squatting bent all the way fucking over. And I don't know how much you know about, like, squat body movement or whatever else, but the higher up your torso, the more upright you're standing, the more quad biased the lift is going to be. And then the more you bend over, the more kind of power lifter style, that's the more glutes you're going to activate. And for me, I do not need to improve the strength of my posterior chain. And I also do not need to be walking around with a dump truck. I want thicker, like, thighs, like tree trunks. That's just a guy thing. Uh, this is... I think about this sometimes. Sometimes I feel kind of bad for, uh, for the small percentage of female viewers who are curious about working out. Or, like, workout tips from me. Because I never go over glutes. <laughs> Figure it out, ladies. That's not up to me to tell you. But... Uh, now 906 shouldn't be packed at all. I do not anticipate having to wait for pretty much anything. So hopefully I'm right and the gym is nice and dead for, uh, for a perfect late night leg day. So let's get in there. All right. Similarly to how I started the last arm workout with biceps, I'm not going to try to load my hamstrings up with like as much weight as physically possible. These are going to be kind of controlled, squeeze, burning reps. And then I might move on to laying hamstring curls a bit heavier and harder. more like that. Two more, I think. Fuck. 
One more. I'm gonna make these reps kind of fast and dirty. Calves need much more work. I might even just do one set of laying hamstring curls and move on. Whew. Yeah, that's probably a good idea. I cannot do the full stack for this set. That just goes to show how much damage those, I'd say, fucking moderate weight hamstring curls single leg did. So I'm gonna be a little bit methodical with these reps. I'm not just gonna bust them out rapid fire. Uh, I don't remember who I saw. I just saw a video of somebody fucking jacked and they're doing hamstring curls and they hold it in the stretch position for like a second before doing another rep. So for whatever reason, that just sounds good right now. Oh my god. Okay. I lied about doing only one more. I'm gonna do two more in that exact style and then move on to quads. That felt really cool. So, of course, I want every set to be good. I want to do every set as hard as I fucking can. But there is a little bit of a different mentality when it comes to the last set of the workout. Because unlike any other set, the last one, at least for that body part, is the one set where you don't have to leave anything in the tank. You don't have any more work to be done. Once I finish hamstrings right here, that's it. And I know for a fact if I have a shitty set, I mean, I'll probably just do another one to try to make up for it. So the fact that it's your last one, try to try to think about it like your last stand. Really go fucking nuts. Go hard on all of them, but make sure you go hard on the last one. Don't skimp out just because you're already pumped. That's a stupid mentality. <laughs> Okay. Oh my god. Okay. Time for leg extensions. Oh, let's change gears to quads. There's a lot of leg extensions at this fucking gym, which is sweet. I mean, there's fucking. <laughs> there's four in a line over there. And then there's this one, so fucking five at my disposal. And I can tell I've been using that same, the same two for a long time. And I'm not sure if you know about strength curves of machines, but for the most part, any kind of pulley level rotating machine like this, like a hamstring curl for a leg extension, usually this part, which almost acts as like a fulcrum of, in so of sorts, 
usually it's perfectly round. So when you do a rep, the weight feels the same every time, you know, because it's fucking, this cable's at like the same angle. Uh, that's the gist of it. But this one, look at this shape, man. It's not round. It's like kind of like it juts out and then it flattens. So with this leg extension in particular, it's heaviest at the bottom and then up top, it's a bit lighter. So what that does in terms of, you know, how it feels as a fucking lifter is I can still go pretty heavy and feel a lot of that, you know, stretching in the bottom when I'm literally in the stretch position, but I won't get so tired as to not be able to squeeze all the way to the top of the rep and fucking hold it for a second because it's a little lighter on top. If you, uh, if your gym has a lot of prime equipment, then you know exactly what I'm talking about. Those are the, those are the machines with like, something in my fucking eye. <clears throat> those are the machines with like three different weight pins. So you can put weight at different angles. Nothing. I was about to go extra heavy because in my mind I was like, okay, if I hit failure at 12 reps, it'll be easier. So I'm gonna try to flip my approach from what I would probably prefer to do and instead do like five reps, five reps, five reps, back and forth style, a bit lighter weight, but really hold it at the top for a second. So it's still a good amount of weight. My quads are feeling a lot of tension, but what I'm really going for is a super hard squeeze on top. Like if you consider this a tricep push down, instead of this full stack, two plates slapped on the side, this is more like, you know, 20 pounds with only one hand. A little heavier though. That might have been just a bit too light. Oh! 
Okay. One more. A little heavier. Okay, that was too heavy. Let's switch the double leg to burn out. Okay. Okay. Let's go load up the Smith. Ah. Oh my God. Yeah. So Smith machine ended up being taken, but turns out that was a blessing in disguise. So I've kind of been doing some feeler reps since I've never used this machine before. You know, I don't know how heavy I gotta go, but five plates on either side, this will be a good one. Oh my God. I know I'm always breathing heavy, but I breathe extra fucking heavy on leg day for sure. I got a lot of oxygen debt to make up, man. Your quads are a big ass fucking muscle. But before I do the set, I really like the feeling of this because my main gripe with a lot of leg presses is the fact that I have a ton of fucking like abdominal pressure at the bottom. Cause like, that's when the weight's the heaviest, squeezing into your stomach. I feel like I'm gonna shit my pants. But with pendulum leg presses like this one, it gets heavier as you do the rep. And the closer the weight is to being right below this pivot point, the closer it is to having literally fucking zero force. <sighs> you know, I'm talking about like some fucking cosine action. So as I do the rep, it gets harder and harder and harder and I can come back down and I don't feel like I'm gonna give myself a hernia. But let's get hyped up, throw this shit around. In a reasonably controlled manner too. You can't really throw the weight around on this one. One more. I just need to sit here for a minute. Ugh! Ugh! 
Oh, fine. Okay. No, oh, that's enough. Oh, my God. I think I made two assumptions which ended up being incorrect. I, for one thing, overestimated my quads muscular endurance, but I also severely underestimated the trauma that my quads would get from that leg press. I don't know if it's just because I haven't done that movement before, but after that second set, I was fucking fully cooked. Whew. So I could also be because I was extra pumped from leg extensions, which I would attribute most of that effect to being very well hydrated and fed today. Oh, but Oh my god. Let's just fucking see how the legs are looking and skedaddle. I'm so fucking sweaty today. You, uh, little tip for posing down when you get a leg pump try to tuck your shirt in so that your waist looks extra small. Because you gotta remember, this is all about fucking size, proportions, and whatnot. So the smaller your waist, the bigger your legs. But. Oh shit, I am, uh, I am not dissatisfied with this. <laughs> oh, it's just stand, uh, oh, standing straight on. Pretty solid amount of thickness. Nothing like Negzilla, but then again, who is? Oh, Jesus. Ugh. Holy fuck. Yeah. Oh, fuck. You know, today was the first leg day in a long time. And I, I think it just had to be from those fucking machine leg presses where oh, I seriously thought I was going to fucking throw up. <clears throat> that could have been because I was going a little bit faster paced than usual on this lift. But I don't know, man. Those leg presses were diabolical. Because it's just, oh, it's, it's brutal. Because with a, uh, with like a squat, you know when you're not gonna be able to muscle through another rep. But with those, with that leg press and just the nature of its fucking design, even when my quads are cooked, I can still get the weight moving at the bottom because that's where the weight is the lightest. And then I can kind of ride it up and push in my hands a little bit just to get back on top of the rep. And then I get to take a second to breathe just enough where I can barely do another one. Oh my goodness. That. That's a cool machine. A little tip which I could maybe leave you with. If you haven't used the machine ever or for a while. Maybe because you think you won't like it or you tried it once and you didn't really like it. And then a few months have passed. Dude, try that shit again. You gotta remember, for one thing, you're just gonna develop as a lifter. Like now that I'm, I've done this for so many fucking years and I've had so many lifts, I have a much better time sending signals directly to my quads to push the weight rather than just thinking like, okay, push with my legs. So some, some machines are gonna feel better the more experience you get. So even if I didn't care for that leg press or if I thought it was stupid, you know, a few, uh, few months ago or maybe a few years ago, <coughs> there's no denying that those are some sweet working sets done today. Don't get a, uh, try not to get too routine with the movements that you do or the rep schemes or the styles or everything, you know? If you do the same workout every fucking week, if you go hard and your sets are really hard and you're progressively overloading and you've got high intensity and you're eating your food, right? You are gonna progress. You know, there's no doubt about that. Somebody could only do bench press, no cable flies, no pack deck, no nothing, and build a pretty big chest as long as they went hard. But would it be more likely that they would develop a better chest if they did extra movements? 
and have a better mind muscle connection be able to flex harder from doing a variety of different exercises i'm inclined to think so but i don't know that just kind of goes to something that i kind of contradict myself on a lot because on one hand i usually talk about how you don't have to overcomplicate this shit keep it simple just do hard sets but i think that's almost like my main point and once you have that down then it will definitely benefit you to get real specific like pick really specific movements and rep schemes and everything else uh that's really my primary gripe with the rise of uh popularity of like the science-based lifter dogma because it's like you're trying to tell someone such a niche and like specific tip where they would benefit so much more from trying to really just work on their intensity and you know have decent form in their movements you don't need to tell a beginner lifter okay you need to supinate oh, oh you're dude you're curling at a, a totally wrong pace you're not even gonna look it's just not necessary you know the fucking beginner does not need to hear a hyper specific tip he needs to hear the basics and then you know the complexity of what they should be wrapping their head around and thinking about should increase over time so it's not that i think that science-based lifting is a fucking you know chump cause i definitely don't whenever i see a video like that of jeff nippard mike is tall everything i listen i'm curious i'm a fucking lifter man i want I want to know how these guys are doing it. I don't want to get too closed of a mind. But on the other hand, I can still see like, ah, does it really matter that much? I'd rather hear it go fucking hard, you know, try to dig deep, really fucking push it instead of, you know, make sure that your outer quad is firing by separating your knees an extra three inches, you know? So that's kind of, that's where I stand there. If you, uh, if you were curious, but main idea, work smart but it's going to be more important for you to work hard if you can combine the two then you're really in the fucking you know what's uh you're in the bullseye area of uh muscular stimulation as it were but i'm gonna get home eat a flipping ton of food i uh you know i'm trying not to swear so much it's so i don't understand why exactly maybe it's just because i'm talking to myself if you talk to me in person i'm never dropping f-bombs or like saying shit I'm like god damn it like fuck i never say that in my normal life i don't know why i do it in here but uh i'll try to work on it i'll try to start saying frickin' and darn Ugh. i do get comments they're like quit swearing i'm working on it i'm working on it but let's get out of here All right, quick little tip, potentially quotable. If you want to stand out, first you're going to have to stick out. You got to be able to deal with that, you know? So this is primarily directed towards the beginner lifter, where you're still kind of making this transition into a fucking, I mean, a pretty serious commitment. If you are locked into making some you know, serious gains, and what I mean by that is there are, I don't want to say haters. I think the word, I mean, I mean this in the opposite way of enablers, but there are disablers, which you're going to run into, into your uh, transition to getting into fitness, right? There are going to be dudes where if you bring a fucking, you know, Tupperware bodybuilder style into your school lunch, I guess this, I'm kind of maybe directing this at like high schoolers because I feel like the majority of people who start lifting are probably in high school, at least the people watching this. But this could apply to anybody. Let's say you bring it to work too. You know, I'll hear stories about my mom where like she used to work in a, like an office with this one bodybuilder dude and he'd always whip out some fucking canned tuna and everybody back to you that fucking stinks in a case like that maybe just switch to chicken or something that doesn't smell so bad be a little more courteous but like i was saying you know, kind of high school lunchroom i mean fuck man i was busting out boiled eggs when i was dieting down because even though i was kind of main gaining in high school i would still sort of you know, i would cut every so often 
I'd get lean every so often, then go back to main gaining, or lean bulking, as it were. But there were definitely times where, you know, I've got my sort of high school friend group where it's like me and everybody else, my brother too. So they'd show up at the house sometimes, pick my brother up and you know, go off to do whatever shenanigans. And I'm like, fuck man, I'm staying home, I gotta eat. Or, you know, I, I don't want to stay up too late because I gotta wake up early to do my cardio. I'm a little bit lazy with my sleep schedule now because with college classes, you don't really have to wake up at a perfect time every day. I probably should work on that. But, you know, there's definitely times where you gotta kind of say no because you're doing something for you because you want to do it and it's going to get you results. Right? So, fuck. Everybody in my house looked at me like I was crazy when I was drinking egg whites and, you know, eating sardines in the fucking kitchen. Uh, they probably thought I was especially crazy because that was when I was only a 160 pound beginner. So, I'm doing all this crazy stuff food wise, like gym wise, and I didn't even have the results yet to back it up. You know? If you saw me chug a, you know, a mason jar full of egg whites, eat some sardines, and, uh, you know, drink a gallon of Crystal Light now, as a 260 pound dude, even in fucking public, you know, even if somebody didn't know, like, who I was, and they just saw a big dude eating very strangely, they're just gonna recognize the fact that that is to do with you know, the results that I've got. So you almost get a pass. You know, it's like the bigger you are, the more of a pass you get for doing you know, kind of classic lifter shit, right? You're not a poser. So as a beginner, you, know, you might hear people say like, oh, why the fuck are you eating that, dude? Come on, that's fucking stupid. Uh, or, you know, if, if, you're, uh, if you have potentially less than desirable friends and you, you, know, you want to say no to uh, like a hangout or like a trip or whatever else because, you know, you want to lift then fuck man, they might rip on you. They might rip on you a little bit. And that's where you gotta say, eh, fuck off man, I'm getting huge. Hit it anyway. You know? So, the more of a uh, shield you can put up on your fucking brain and just, you know, deflect any potentially demotivating comments or fucking opinions, especially as a beginner, the better. Right, honestly, as a beginner, that's the most important fucking part. You know, nobody is ever gonna give me flack for eating a weird ass fucking bodybuilding meal and carrying around a gallon jug of water. Because, fuck man, when you're big, people get the gist. But, you know, as a beginner, if somebody's like, oh, why are you, why are you drinking so much water? Or just, this is, I'm kind of just saying hypotheticals too. This isn't necessarily like things that I've really heard that much. But, if you can get the mindset of just saying, eh, fuck off, and really meaning it when people say some shit that's fucking just like, ugh, I mean, just straight up negative. Anything negative. You know, if you can not let that get under your skin and just keep going how you're going, you're going to set yourself up for success. You know, the chump lifter, or really the chump in general, in any aspect of life, who can hear you know, negative shit or like just fucking let people get under their skin and piss them off and like, you know, like if somebody t was mean to them early in the day and they have a completely bad day because of it, because you like, you care about what somebody thinks and look, not cool, right? Not freaking cool. Now, the interstitial state between chump and baller is somebody who you know, they they maybe get a little bit upset, but they don't let it bother them too much. You know, it's like, oh, they're being mean. Screw them. Um, go about your business. Whereas the enlightened, I, I'd say the enlightened lifter, but I really just mean the enlightened person. Whenever he hears some shit that may be potentially targeted at him, <laughs> if he just doesn't even, doesn't even react, not even mentally, like, just nothing and then here's something cool and motivating goes oh shit I like that that's what he kind of puts his energy into he's gonna have a better time and of course this goes for everything but I'm gonna relate it to lifting you know? and uh, I mean fuck me let's be real if you post a video of yourself posing it doesn't matter how big or small you are you're gonna get comments like oh what the fuck? just fucking 
random ass hate comments, whatever. It's part of the deal. Right? We've all seen uh, we've all seen David Goggins. Right? We all get the gist there. But one uh, one key aspect, one key like shift in your mentality and your thought process, which will definitely get you going, is to be able to convert anything negative into a fucking positive. And I don't mean that in like a uh, in like a hope pilled, like like be nice kind of way. Right? I mean that like if somebody's fucking with you or something, or somebody's making you mad, or it's I can't really think of an exact scenario right now. I've said this speech before, and I've had actual examples. I can't really remember them, but you know, fuck anything that you can take in your mind, which could maybe potentially demotivate you flipping around and turning into something cool, right? Somebody, I don't know, somebody makes fun of you for being weak on a certain lift. Don't say, this is the situation you should not have in your head. Oh man, he's right. I'm, my bench is weak. I don't know. Cry to yourself. Not cool. Now, you flip that around, you say, uh, just wait, you mother effer. Just wait till I double my bench in the next few years. Just wait. You know what I'm saying? I can't really... Fuck, I don't know. I've said this I've, I've said this exact speech before, like, many months ago. Or maybe even like a year ago or so. And I had a lot more actual examples. I don't know, man. You guys fucking spoil me. All the comments are like, good lift, man. We love seeing it. Um, I feel a little... And like... I love it. That's fucking sweet. But honestly, part of me kind of misses getting more hate comments because it kind of fires me up, you know, as, as cra as, you know, stupid as that sounds. Yeah. So whenever you see me do a set, that's maybe a little bit too easy, or you can tell I left some shit in the tank. I need you to fucking comment below, say some shit like, uh, that was a fucking pussy set of leg press. You didn't even throw up. Like, honestly, hearing that kind of shit kind of fires me up, you know? Like, the more you can kind of get excited and motivated by even negative shit like that, okay, and you set yourself up for success. So I think that's the end of my little shtick there. Whether you get it or not, whatever. But solid leg day. That pendulum leg press was fucking cool. That was really fucking cool. I need to do that more often. I like that one. You know what? I... I think I should have done that single leg. I think if I would have done that set single leg, I probably would have had a better time. Because I noticed this on leg extensions and some leg pressing movements. Is if I do both legs at once, I mean, both your quads firing at the same time, that is just sucking oxygen out of your lungs. And I feel like it makes me out of breath a little bit faster. Whereas if I were to do one leg at a time, it wouldn't be so taxing on my whole system because the set is spread out over a longer period, you know, because I'm doing one side, breathing for a few seconds, and then doing the other side, rather than both at once. And also, I think it might help me focus on each quad individually a little bit more. But maybe I'm just saying that because the sets were hard, and I was out of breath. But yeah, I, I really like that one. And even though it was a leg press, I wasn't really getting too much glutes activation, which that's freaking sweet. Like I was saying on the way here, if uh, if a leg press really fires my glutes to the point where I feel it more there in my butt than I do in my quads, then that's a little bit of an indicator, uh, indicator, a little bit of an indicator to me to say, I don't like it. I don't much like that. I'm going to do some Smith Machine squats or barbell squats or leg extensions. But that one was pretty cool. That one was pretty cool. I feel kind of bad. I've always had such a closed mind about that machine. I've never used it before now, and I've been going to this gym for years. Uh, not good. The last thing you want to do is limit yourself in terms of your fucking exercise selection. Just for the insignificant thought process of like, oh, that machine doesn't look that good. I'm not going to use it. Stupid. Stupid, stupid, stupid. I feel bad for being there, for having such a narrow mind. As a lifter, it will always do you good to widen your horizons. You know, like I was saying to the pose down, 
like listening to people talk about training and this is one thing that's kind of cool about well I was gonna say about lifting but it's really cool for anything in general any niche like topic or no matter how like specific it is and whether or not this is a good or a bad thing in terms of like targeted ads and maximizing like capital gains off the individual it's definitely a fucking bad thing and I don't like it but social media will you know, shoot you a ton of content about whatever you're interested in which makes it so easy to digest information I mean we're so spoiled back in the day I mean I'm talking like 90s 2000s people are getting all their information from listing either from just the uh, the gearheads running around the gym or from muscle magazines you know or like uh, like bodybuilding tapes and like CDs and stuff and even in those people weren't really doing their real workouts because they were kind of doing it for the camera you know it's like it wasn't really real whereas now I mean we're at a point where there's a fucking there's so much fitness content that you couldn't even get through it all you know so you have such it's just this vast source of information and if you like the gym Honestly, if you have your fucking phone in your hand and you get in a conversation about lifting weights with your buddy, the fucking microphone's going to pick it up and it's going to show you gym videos later on. And that's the part that kind of freaks me out. I mean, you're never going to catch me with an Alexa in my house. I know having a fucking phone on you at all times is the same shit, but whatever. Uh, but it is cool because you sort of passively... You know, absorb information about the topic just from scrolling through fucking TikTok and Instagram. You know? So, as kind of, you know, cringy and fucking just negative as the fitness social media side is, there is an astronomically higher amount of quality information. But there's also a fucking huge amount of shit, stupid information. So that's where the responsibility lies on you as the viewer to be able to think with your mind, use a little bit of your IQ and say, okay, like let's say you watched a video that was very good, it had a lot of logical sense, you could digest it and make sense to you, that's cool. They're talking about working out or fucking cardio or calories or macros or bicep curls, it could be anything. You watch a video, it makes logical sense in your head and you think, okay, I want to try that out see if it works that's the real proof you know like when you watch a video talking about something everybody's gonna be a bit different in terms of how they respond to you know everything when it comes to training so you can watch as many videos as you want but you do have to try it out for yourself and see how it works but like I was saying a second ago you should be able to see things and after a period of time of lifting talking to people in person, seeing, you know, just sort of scanning the area, reading comments, everything else, you should be able to get a little bit of an idea of when you see something that's fucking stupid and something that's smart. And the people that read into things that are stupid and they take that as fact are the people who just don't fucking get it. You, know, you got to remember, being big and lean and impressive looking and having a lot of size you know, I know this sounds weird coming from me because usually I'd say like, oh, listen to the big guys. But that doesn't mean that they know the fucking best way to do it or they're going to have good advice for you. you know, some people are just genetically fucking gifted in some specific muscles or just their whole fucking body, you know, where they're just getting jacked off of like a basic training routine without too much thought. You know, if somebody has just crazy chest genetics and they hit chest like once a week with just a few sets of bench sure he looks super impressive so when he says something about chest training your initial instinct is like holy crap this guy's got a big chest he's probably fucking smart not always man you know so that's that's where it lies on you to say okay just because this guy's big doesn't mean he's fucking stupid you know and i want you to apply that with me too right? of course everyone's going to have an underlying bias when they talk about training uh, because if something works, or if you tried something for a few years, and you've gotten results from it, then in your mind, you are going to have this sort of thought process like, okay, this works, it works for me, this is the right way to do it, 
everything else probably isn't as good. And I think I'm subject to that too. I try not to be. Like, I try to be reasonably unbiased a little, but you can't be completely. So, you've got to just realize this guy might be jacked, but eh, he's, he doesn't know what he's talking about. Or, this guy's a bit smaller, but he's got some fucking good ass information. Well, that's just on you to figure out. So, if I say some shit that's pretty stupid, you gotta rip on me for it. You know? Uh, don't get the wrong idea. But if I say something smart, give me a give me a little little comment that says, that was an awesome tip, Sam. I'll read it and I'll go, yippee! But, uh, you get the gist. So, don't, uh, don't put too much weight in what people are saying on fucking Instagram and TikTok and YouTube videos. It's good information, but it's not like it's a fucking, you know, peer-reviewed textbook like you get in school where, like, okay, this information is highly accurate and it's been, you know, deciphered, or it's been, like, read over by PhD ever. Anybody could just post anything, you know, so trying stuff out for yourself, right? doing a training routine for a few months, trying a specific kind of diet, you know, doing that on a consistent basis, and I cannot stress consistent enough, if you do something like that on a consistent basis for months on end, I'd say if you're bouncing around different workout splits, fuck man, I don't think you should change your workout split that often because it's not that important. Uh, but training consistently is. So keeping the same split, I think. Don't change your split up shorter than every eight weeks. I think that's just kind of a general rule, which sounds about right. Because if you're constantly changing your workout like order and everything else, you're kind of losing focus on what you should be doing, I think. But then again, do whatever you want. I'm just a fucking guy talking. Uh, but, whatever. but yeah, so do some shit. And if you make sure you train hard and you really push in the gym, you hit your protein goals, you go to sleep on time, you're eating a good amount of carbs and fats and everything else, you should see results. And if everything else is on point and you're doing a specific kind of training and you're really just kind of plateaued, then that's your cue to say, I got to change something up. You know? So you should almost be like a self-adjusting uh, heat seeking missile. You know, if you know how something like that works, it's got a target, which your target is going to be gains, right? And you start off in this direction. Let's say gains is, uh, it's right here above me. You start off in this direction, you see the results you got and you think, okay, I should probably change a little bit. And you like, you, you adjust something. Maybe you adjust your training frequency or you lower your workout volume or you add cardio. Or maybe, you, uh, maybe you're bulking too hard and you got to lower your calories. Maybe eat a little bit less you know, treats if you're putting body fat on too fast. So you started off on this trajectory, and then now you're here. And you're a little bit closer to that end result, gains. So constantly over time, you should be making adjustments to your training according to you know, trying to improve it and improve the results that you're getting. And if you can do that, after a few adjustments, you should be pretty fucking close, you know? Like, this isn't, um, as, like, I mean, I could sit here for hours talking about every aspect of training. I mean, I've, I've fucking done it for, like, the last year and a half. But, ah, that's, like I was saying, sometimes I kind of contradict myself. Even though there's that much shit to talk about, it's not rocket science, you know? Like, when I, uh, a lot of the stuff I'm saying... Except for a few key things, which I think are potentially groundbreaking for some people's routines. Cardio, tracking your macros, training really hard. Honestly, these are three things which I will say with my complete heart and soul. But other than that, all sorts of little tips about like, like rep schemes and stuff like that. That's just real minute details. If you can get a good idea of the big picture and make small adjustments over time based on your own results, which you see for yourself, you're golden. You're fucking golden, you know. 
Like you don't have to write yourself a three-page thesis talking about how you're going to adjust your Arnold split to a push-pull leg split. You know, just fucking do it and see what happens. You um. So I know how that's kind of a back and forth between like keep it simple and try to optimize it. But fuck, man, there's a lot of things in life which are two sides of the same coin. Just do an even mix of both. Same thing with your sets in your workout. For every crazy heavy set, maybe do a lighter squeezing set. Yeah, it's just fucking, it's always a back and forth. So, take with that what you will. You know, if you're, uh, if you're kind of a beginner, you don't know what to do, fucking watch some Jeff Nippard beginner workout split videos. Super concise. Or anybody. It's going to help you to watch people that you like listening to also. So, don't, uh, just don't get too daunted by the fact that, like, maybe you don't know everything about every aspect of training. Half these guys who are fucking huge on social media don't. You know, it's a, just lift hard. Lift hard, track your macros, and do your cardio. That's the only advice that I really have to say to anybody. So the plan now is to chow down and pass out. The perfect end to the day of a lifter. In a bulking phase, at least. If I was dieting down, I would say, okay, time to go home, drink a ton of water, eat some egg whites with spinach and a little bit of fat-free cheese, and then go to bed. And probably go to bed a little bit hungry, because that's just the nature of being in a calorie deficit. But that's all I got. Cardio in the morning, followed by chest later. So I will see you for that.